An update has just been released for Hypsia Singe, which introduces a bunch of improvements for light gun users. If you don't know, Hypsius is the successor to the Daphne emulator, which can run Laserdisc arcade games on a PC, Mac, or even a Raspberry Pi, and includes Singe support for fan-made games and American laser games, such as the infamous Mad Dog McCree. What does that mean? Infamous. Oh, Dusty. Infamous is, is when you're more than famous. This man, El Guapo, is not just famous, he's infamous. HypeCS is maintained by Dirtbag Exxon and can be obtained from his GitHub repo. He recently introduced the ability to apply bezel art to the games, which is a major development and improves the look of the games no end by offering you something nice to look at in what would otherwise be blank areas of your screen. But since then, a bunch of other major improvements have been added, both to HypeCS itself and the game data files, and they offer significant improvements to the playability of the games for light gun users in particular. First up, let's talk about the border. The Send and Light Gun requires a border to be displayed on the screen so that it can calculate the position of your aim. This border usually needs to fit neatly around the edge of the game. The snag is that it needs to be the biggest and brightest box that the gun can see, otherwise it will get confused by, say, a particularly bright looking bezel that occupies a larger space. So the usual way to counteract that is to make darker looking bezels. But Hypsius now includes a command switch that offers the opportunity to rescale the movement of the cursor. This means that you can apply bezel art with a border around the outside of your 16x9 sized artwork, enabling you to keep that bright art. Applying a command parameter of X ratio 1.33 will tell the game to adjust the mouse's horizontal movement relative to the new border size. This will work on any shape or size of screen. As long as you plug in the correct ratio value, you will have perfectly accurate aim. Another big new feature is the inclusion of a new light gun reload option for all of the games where reloading is a thing. The pre-existing reload options were designed with mouse users in mind, and they were flawed with areas of overlap where a gunshot and a reload would happen at the same time. The existing mouse-based reload options have been preserved and remain unaltered, but the new light gun reload option will open up the full screen area as a shootable zone, and off-screen reloading is possible by shooting off-screen without triggering a simultaneous gunshot. There's no overlap between shooting zones and reloading zones. It's also possible to reload by using a dedicated reload button at any time, and reloads will not be triggered if your bullets are already at max. Now, if you don't think that sounds like a great update, then maybe you haven't tried playing Crime Patrol with the old mouse-based reload options. A couple of visual upgrades to the trigger-activated gunshot have also been added. If you prefer to play with crosshairs disabled, then firstly, well done. Choose the trigger-activated crosshair option from the service menu, and you will be in for a treat. Previously, when a shot was fired, you'd get this static gun flash image appear at the location you shot. But annoyingly, for the second that it's on the screen, it follows your aim around. This has now been corrected. Not only will it now only show at the spot you fired and stay put, it is also now an animated gunshot, adding an extra level of detail. It's worth pointing out as well that many of the standard definition versions of the games might have annoyingly shown a gun icon instead of a flash. This was a bug in the game code that has been fixed, and the animated flash is now present in those games too. And that's just some of the changes that have been recently introduced. Behind the scenes, support has now been included for multiple mice, which means that two-player light gun games are now possible. At present though, none of the games allow for that functionality, and it will require rewriting the Singe strips for the games to make that happen. But it's coming, and it's exciting. And that's a project I look forward to working on. But thanks to Dirtbag for being an amazing developer, enabling the features in Hypsius that can make these improvements possible, and for being supportive and basically giving me free reign to mess around with the sin scripts for these games. Now, if you want to update, you can grab the latest build of Hypsius from Dirtbag's GitHub repo. If you're a Raspberry Pi RetroPie user, then update your RetroPie setup script, and then you can update the Hypsius emulator from there. And make sure you grab the updated Singe data files for the games from Dirtbag's repo as well. But thanks a lot. See you again soon.